might be a modern metropolis now, but time was when Birmingham was hailed as the first manufacturing town in the world. In those days, goods were shipped on water. Now the canals for pleasure and leisure. But there won't be much of either for the players because it's quarter-finals day at the 2024 All England Championships. Welcome inside the Utilita Arena. We are down to just two courts. That's when you know things are getting serious. Magnificent action lined up for you today. But first, that man is Malcolm Bannum. He's the manager of umpires. He only knew he was going to be doing this about two minutes ago. It's his last event after 32 years in charge of the umpires. And quite a few of them have come to give him a send-off as well, which is great to see. We wish him a happy retirement. That is the HSBC BWF World Tour Finals trophy. And that's what the best players on the planet will be playing for in December in China. The best players on the planet. Championships 2024. Please welcome onto the Minoru Yoniyama Court in the women's singles the number four seed from Japan, Akane Yamaguchi, and her opponent from Indonesia, the number seven seed, Gregoria Mariska Tungjo. Well, this is a terrific match to get us started. Yamaguchi so popular everywhere she goes, she's ranked four in the world, and she starts as a pretty heavy favourite here against Gregoria Tunjung, who I think by common consent is one of the most improved players on the circuit, certainly over the last year or so. The head-to-head -head is pretty one-sided, as you can see, 13-4 in Yamaguchi's favour. She's won five of the last six, most recently semi-final of the Hong Kong Open in September. Their history Service. actually goes back a long way. Okay, they first met back in 2018. <laughs> 26 years of age now, Yamaguchi. World champion twice, of course, in 2021 and then the following year. Twice a world junior champion as well. She played international badminton at the age of 15. They start so young these days. And she'll have ambitions at the uh, Paris Olympics. She lost the TV single in the quarters in Tokyo three years ago. 16 world tour titles. Five of them last year. We know she's informed. She got to the final of the French Open only last weekend. Lost to Ann Su Yun, and there's no disgrace in that. Taken to three games by uh, Chokowong of Thailand in the second round. Close decider as well in that match. And her 
Samuel Tonin from Indonesia is Bakuria Tinjun, who is a couple of years younger than Yamaguchi and is at her best ever world ranking, as you see there, number seven. She actually played internationally a year before Yamaguchi did. She was only 14, and she's also a former world junior champion. She won that event back in 2017, and last year was a big one. We Chen Yufei memorably in the Japan Masters final. That's a Super 500. And then she took out PD Sindhu in the final of the Spain Masters to win that as well. And if you were with us yesterday, you would have seen her come through in a, a fairly tight two-game uh, match against Bowman Chang. Only took 40 minutes, but as you see, that second game, 24-22, could have gone either way. My name's Trevor Harris, Chris Langridge alongside me today. Not a bad one for starters, Chris. Uh, Tun Jung just about did enough yesterday, didn't she, I thought? Yeah, I think uh, Tun Jung was just a little bit up and down with her performance. Obviously, the key points she did manage to play really well and just managed to snatch it from Bi Wen Zhang. But I think today, this is a tough one to call two totally different styles of players. And, you know, if there's ever going to be an upset, Tun Jung's one of those players that on her day, she is so good. So it's going to be a very exciting match. Paul Buffer in the umpire's chair, Vicky Hatton is the service judge. And we're only about a minute away from kicking off the action on day four of one of the most famous championships in the world. We had royalty here yesterday, His Royal Highness Prince Edward, here to help celebrate the 130th anniversary of the All England. Started in 1899 when Queen Victoria was still on the throne. This is 2024, and an intriguing women's semi. Stand by for the umpire introduction, a quarter-final rather. Stand by for the umpire introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Gregoria Mariska Tunjong, Indonesia. And on my left, Akana Yamaguchi, Japan. Risk of Tunjung to serve. Love all. Play. So here we go. First shuttle hitting anger on quarter finals day. <laughs> we know Tunjung oh, likes to attack. Love. And that's probably going to be her best policy against Yamaguchi. Very, very different styles of play from each other. So Yamaguchi, really good at moving the shuttle around. Incredible retriever of the shuttle. Tunjung a lot more aggressive, a lot more attacking, more creative, but sometimes just those cheaper mistakes can sneak in. like that but this is one of the things when you are kind of the playmaker when you are the player that's more creative a few errors will sneak in it's about managing that controlling that yeah and I, I do wonder if part of the head-to-head -head supremacy that Yamaguchi's enjoyed over Tunjung over the last six years is we know Yamaguchi's so quickly on the court and I think Tunjung can get frustrated playing shots that might be winners against others aren't against Yamaguchi and maybe just tries to force it a little bit. Yeah, I do find it's, it's a little bit similar when Anse Young plays Tyson Ying. Tyson Ying has such a good record against everyone except Anse Young, and it's just Anse Young's defense is so solid that almost frustrates her. A little bit similar, I'd say, with these two players, just on a slightly different scale. So, four points on the spin for Yamaguchi after Tun Jun came out the blocks quickly. Five. 
got to the line. That's another of Yana Gucci's strengths. The number of times that she scrapes the paint with that shuffle. Early challenge here from Tunjun. Reckoning it might have clipped the edge of the line. It was pulled wide by the line judge. Per game, if they're correct, they'll keep it. That will not be the case here. And that was really well challenge left by Yamaguchi. One challenge remaining. Six, two. And this Play. is the other thing. She's the kind of player Yamaguchi can get on a run of successive points, and before you know where you are, you're uh, eight to ten adrift. Look at this. That's now seven in a row. Yeah, and it's really seven, well read. Two. And for me, Yamaguchi, she's still finding her feet and form just a little bit, just because she had those three months off at the end of last year where she had the injuries. Um, and this year, a little bit of a slower start, but last week in French Open, we saw her kind of come alive again, come back to the form that she, she had earlier on in the year, previous year. This is it now with Tunjun, just those errors, just got to bring them in. with missing by a fraction. This lead's just growing and growing. And another. Nine, that was a dispirited two. kind of shot, wasn't it? The body language there from Tunjun. Yeah, just trying too much there. Doesn't need to be that deceptive when she's that low. Got to just get a bit of rhythm, a bit of momentum back. And again, and this is the thing now. This is what Yamaguchi loves. She's not having to do anything to win these rallies. Very comfortable, not having to exert any energy whatsoever. It's important that Tunjun just gets back on track. It's wide, it's 11-2 at the mid-game break. 11, it's only 10 past 10. We did see this 12, yesterday in uh, Tunjung's match against Vyonzang. Just a bit of an edgy start, not really kind of finding her feet early on in the first game, and it's the same thing here. Now, she did manage to turn things totally around, found her form and started to play really, really well. So if you are an Indonesian fan, don't so panic just her. yet. Three, well, that 12. Is a run of 12 straight points for Yamaguchi. <laughs> Thing is, you, you Four, look at the score. The other group has hardly played a winner, has she? It's mainly been errors from the Tunjung racket. Exactly, and, and that is the the concerning thing so far. Just because you know you can you can be losing, but your your opponent's doing all the right stuff and playing incredibly well, and you're just struggling to cope with the pace or the shots or the shot selection. Whereas it definitely was a little bit more. So Tunjung just struggling to find her feet. <laughs> This is it. Before she was just missing by, you know, a fraction, and now she just brought it in, and now making them. It's just that big 12-point run against one of the best players in the world, Bana Yamaguchi. Such a solid and consistent player to to gift her quite such a big run.
This is the thing from a player of Tungu's capabilities. Now we're seeing, you know, phenomenal. The difference is it's extreme, but this is what I did say at the beginning. She's a very attacking, aggressive player that takes the game on, and you do get unforced errors. And now it's just magic. Oh, what a bizarre start to this match. 12 straight points for Yanaguchi, now five in a row for the Indonesian. Scoreline getting more respectable by the point. That will be long. But at the moment, there's, there's you know, just one player who's kind of taking charge, which is Tunjun. And when it works, fantastic. When it doesn't, it's kind of a gift. At the moment, Yamaguchi is playing her game, which is really solid, really consistent, and working the rally. Well, that was almost the first really penetrating shot from Yamaguchi, but that was, an that was not an unforced error. That was excellent play from the Japanese. Yeah, she knew too late that she'd made an error of judgment. That was always dropping just inside the line. When you look at the uh, time of the match so far, 15-7 after eight minutes, and it shows that we just we haven't had a lot of rallies. Um, just strange when someone like Yamaguchi is playing because she is a fantastic rallier, but just because Tunjung at the moment has either been uh, hitting a fantastic winner or a slightly cheaper mm -hmm. unforced error. Service over. Eight fifteen. She might still be six points adrift, but the way that she's playing now might give us some confidence for the second game, assuming that she does lose this opener. And this is, you know, this is a really um, unique game in the way that the flow's going. 12-2 down, and Tung Jung just struggling to find her feet, to now, you know, back in it, 15-10. Service over. 16 10. But I would say so far, double quick time around the sort of 10 minute mark, and we haven't really had a, a rally as such. More cheap points. We had a good cheap. 10. Yamaguchi was just too tight. Good lead again. She's 19, a very good judge normally, 10. Yamaguchi. And then to uh, let the shuffle go, when to play it. <laughs> so after only 10 minutes 20, on court, game point, she's got herself 10, 10 game points in this absolutely bizarre opening game. 21 points for 10. I don't think too many would have seen that coming. No surprise, I guess, that Yamaguchi leads by one game to but just the manner of it. I think it was a little more one-sided than we were led to believe. She's in front, though. One love, the Japanese in front. Thank 
ポンポンで下入れたのについてきてでプチッとやってで高めのこう抜いたところで自分の指導権をでちょっとどうしようかねっていう感じだったThis does go from left to right as you look on the screen, but she started it out far too wide, never going to come back enough. Really, really important that Tungjun second will start to the second game. It's, it's not even necessarily that she has a lead or that the score's kind of irrelevant. It's that she gets herself into the game, that she feels good, and she just cuts down these mistakes. Margins at the moment are just slightly off. Gregoria Mariska Tungjun challenges called out. I never say that you could completely second guess a line call, but that did look to be it looked to be daylight between shuffle and line there. Yeah and the problem is if this is out it's, it's another gifted point. She's got to make Kana Yamaguchi play and what I mean by that is twist and turn her. She's got to bring these margins in because you can't win the point from that shot and if you can't win the point challenge you definitely shouldn't lose it from that position. One challenge remaining and that don't so challenge over. as well. Two one play Looks to the heavens in frustrated fashion. Tunjun. This is it. That last shot, great shot, over. but fairly safe. She just read it, stepped Two, in, took it three. early. She's got to play these rallies out. There, steps in. Good shot. If she goes too extreme and takes the game on too much, this is where she's gifting these mistakes. Think back to the last time they played each other, Hong Kong Open. Really close game, 70 minutes. 21-18 in the final game to Yamaguchi. A very, very close game. So much better, so much better. A well-constructed rally. She played the whole rally out. She didn't force it. She didn't take crazy risks early on. There gets Yamaguchi in big trouble, and then she opens up the space in the court. It's an accurate smash, but it's you know it's clearly inside the line. for her and belief when she plays like this she's so good she doesn't have to be overly creative or too extreme with the shot quality I think, but I mean, Yamaguchi's not playing badly, of course she's not, but she's it feels like she's playing within herself so far. Not we haven't seen too much 
um, you know, classic Yamaguchi brilliance so far. I think sometimes in the first game, it's, you know, very, very comfortable and she hasn't had to do much. She kind of expects the same in the second, whereas Tungun's totally turned this around. It's so not so complacency, that would be extreme, but it's a Four, case of five. the concentration just wavers just a fraction. And you also get surprised by your opponent raising their level by, by so much. I mean, in the first game, Tungjung didn't perform to the level that she can, and we've had a few rallies in this second. So different from that. Five, all. Especially in the second game, we've seen a lot of Tunjung relifting Yamaguchi. You can see here Yamaguchi chasing forward. Good relift. Goes over her. You can see it's quite a long way in. Proven quite an effective tactic so far. Continuing in the second game, albeit it's a lot closer than the first so far. <laughs> Jan Kucci's body language as that drops on the line. Yeah, that was an incredible shot, played to absolute perfection. This is it, you know, the rally before Tunjung, one shot, you know, phenomenal Seven. shot, no doubt about it. But then the next rally, Yamaguchi works the rally, but doesn't do anything incredible. And then it, she wins the point. Just feels like, can Tunjung sustain this higher level when she does win the rally? So it's over. Eight. Struggling for consistency. Tinjun. Yeah, it was everything after that rally. You know, she's frustrated herself. She knows it's an easy point. Service over. Oh, and you don't see that often from Tinjun. Getting herself animated, which is the right thing to do, I think. Got to get herself going to try and find her level. Often she's a very laid back, relaxed, calm character. Again. And this is the thing when you're in a situation where maybe you're just struggling to find your form, you've got to do something to kind of not wake yourself up, but do something to change what's happening because the rhythm, the momentum, it's not going with her. If it is get yourself riled up, if it is calm down, if it is communicate more or less with the coach, whatever it is. So a two point lead for Tunjung as uh, she bids to level this match. And putting up a far better showing so far in the second game than she did in the first.
Gucci running all over the place. Yeah, and this is what we'd expect before the game, and, and this is the thing, since uh, Tumjun, since she kind of got fired up, since she, you know, shouted and could see the adrenaline kind of pumping, she has been a different player, and it's controlling those emotions, and maybe that's what she needed. And now maybe we're going to see the Tumjun that we saw at the end of 2023, that so much success. That's the thing, though, for Tunjun, she mustn't let that affect her. That's just a, you know, doesn't get any better. As you said, net cord line, it's, it's perfection. But the way she's now playing is totally different. For her, she's got to keep on this run, keep on this momentum. Try and force Yamaguchi to have to change what she's doing. She did that yesterday, actually. It's a good hold there, good deception from Yamaguchi. Yeah. As you can hear, obviously, from the other court, we've got two courts in play today, down from four previous three days. Going to one court for tomorrow and Sunday. She'd work the opportunity, wow. she? Yeah, she knows it, that's why she's frustrated. She worked the rally well. There was a gap there, there was a space, it didn't have to be perfect. She's playing a lot, lot better now. Quite a big contrast from the first game. Brilliant shot, and again a well-constructed rally. 12. And this is one of the integral things, you know, how how well do you settle into a match? And, and I think Tunjun will be honest and admit that the first game she didn't settle, she didn't find that level, she didn't feel comfortable out there. She was missing, making a few cheaper mistakes, and it's kind of just before halfway through the second game, she started to settle, let out some of the emotion, the frustration, and and now she's playing to a really high level. Level. 
Stanley 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 Sportingly, <laughs> from Tim Jim, is it to say, yeah, that was too good. stage of the game. Mistakes and now just creeping back in. So important as she just settles the ship, just calms it down again, plays the full rally, waits for the right time. Anaguchi in front in this game for the first time since she led 8 7. I think Yamaguchi spotted really well this relift because it's happening at the beginning of the second game, it was quite effective. Yamaguchi's now adjusted and she's ready for the relift. Well, that is an absolute peach, just when she needed it most. That's a brilliant shot, and you can see how fired up Tim Jing is. I've never seen her like this before. Service over. 18. Hoping for a call, it never came. Yeah. Nine moments here for the seventh seed. <laughs> well, the touch from Yamaguchi was absolutely sublime. Because I don't think Tijin's shot was that bad. Yeah, and that's the thing there. It's full credit to Yamaguchi. Phenomenal touch at the net. Tijin didn't really do anything wrong. 
Just a good rally from Yamaguchi, which you can handle if you're Tundra. Two match points. That's in by a long way, actually. Brilliant hold. She just held it long enough to make Yamaguchi have to chase forward, and then when she could see her moving forward, punched it over her. Now then, how's your nerve? One match point saved. One to go. Oh, pretty good, you'd have to say. Nerveless rally from Tunju. Yeah, Tunju's round the head, reverse slice, cross court. Such a lovely shot. It's so hard to see it. This one here. Played to pretty much perfection. At all. This is the thing, if you keep asking questions of your opponent, eventually you will get one or two cheaper mistakes. And see, Yamaguchi is phenomenal with her consistency, but even she will at times make simpler mistakes. So, having saved two match points, it's a game point now for Tunjun to level. What all it is, and we have a decider 22 10. And that's a great display of character from the Indonesian. This is the uh, practice court area, and uh, next up for us will be a women's doubles. The Imsel sisters up against Matsuyama and Shida, practicing on the far side of both those courts. And of course, they might have felt that it went on now almost when Yamaguchi had a couple of match points. As it is, they'll have another 15, 7, 20 7, minutes to practice. 10, 13. Yamaguchi having uh, two match points now has to refocus. I think the big thing for any young players out there watching to take from this match is see in the first game, Sung Jun couldn't quite find her level. It wasn't a case that she was playing bad, it was she was taking too many risks, the shot selection wasn't quite there, the margins were off because the second game she played really well and you can't go from playing badly to well in such a short space of time, it's the choices that you make. She's always had that level. Akari Yamaguchi challenges, called out. I don't think Yamaguchi's going to get much joy here. I wonder what's going through her head, because 
Obviously, the first game was very straightforward, mainly because of the errors that were coming from her opponent. Second game, had those two chances to win the match, couldn't take them. And now you're kind of thinking, oh, I want to battle. Definitely, it's, it's going to be a... It's going to be a mental battle now for Yamaguchi to try and turn everything around. It'll feel like, you know, the carpet, the rug's been swept beneath her feet. This is the thing, you know, so, something so, uh, that Yamaguchi's renowned for is her, three, well, especially two. her shot quality in a difficult situation, but also her consistency, moving the shuttle around, and she's finding it difficult because she's not too sure what Tung Jung's going to bring. struggling to believe the amount of mistakes she's making in not that difficult positions. Producing the old Jim Yamaguchi, even though you'd say she's nowhere near her best. <laughs> Fantastic turn there. So it's over. This is why it seems so difficult to play. Because she is so creative and she can. And the shot quality on this there is brilliant. Such a difficult shot to play in that situation. Turn it back across. Easy shots playing the straight. Well, she's got the bit between her teeth now. Seven, five. <laughs> She, is. she took it so late, and the gap she had to play in was so small because Tim Jung held the net. She had a high base. Six, seven. Chases forward here. Good quality. Damn, it's a comfortable mistake from Tim Jung. Brilliant net 
shot there from Yamaguchi. And she does her time with the net, she's got such brilliant touch. Incredible block from down there. Not even that high, but it's so tight to the net. Perfect smash, Eight, right on the line. where the gap is, but to play that, you catch that wrong, you open your court up. Just put it right on the inside of the line. Too much there, gifted the point. So incredibly quick match, We're only 44 Ten, minutes in, and we're nine. nearly halfway through the decider here. Yamaguchi yeah, on that one after the rally, frustrated, broke the string on that shot. So hard to control it, the tension the players have in their strings. When the string goes, the racket loses all the tension, sometimes even distorts its head shape slightly, and it's so hard to control the shot. Couldn't be any closer. One game all, ten all. On a knife edge, this quarter final. Comes in with the slenderest of advantages. Pressure from Yamaguchi, steps in, reads where it's going. That's why I think she's got to just do a little bit more. Got to be a little bit more proactive. She gives Tunjikin too much time on the shuttle. She is so creative. Being a little bit passive for me, Yamaguchi. Well 
persevered. 12, 11. Yeah, that's a brilliant rally from Tunja. Just kept the pressure on. Yamaguchi's getting it back, but she can't guide it. She can't get it away from her opponent. Just essentially surviving. That's a lovely reverse there. Very confident put away. The final shot. Well, it's called out. She wants Hawkeye to check it. Another string's gone from Yamaguchi. the matches now to the first game getting rallies now both players playing to a high level moving each other out positioning each other so on the floor after this rally to flow, she's allowing her to play. She's essentially just defending and hoping that Tunjung will make mistakes, and Tunjung will. But when she plays rally, rallies as good as that. That's all the time now, Yamaguchi's on the back foot, chasing. Perfect slice, you can see that clips the tape. This is the margin that she's playing with at the moment. Yeah. 
Doesn't have to be that perfect, that shot is never going to win the rally. Just trying to outmaneuver your opponent so that hopefully the gaff on the court will grow bigger. To give you a better chance to outmaneuver again and again before the gap gets big enough to then try and think about winning the rally. The start that Yanaguchi made where she won those 12 straight points in the first game to lead 12 2. If it's said that it's going to be 16 in the final game, I've got, I've got too many takers, but that is the way of it. Still impossible to split these two. There's a bit of magic from Yanaguchi. This is the thing when Yamaguchi reads it and she's earlier on the shuttle. It's really devastating. She's been just a bit passive and allowed Tung Jun to do what she needs or what she wants. And Tung Jun, I think, is in need of some kind of attention. I've seen her grimacing after a lot of points, the last few points. In the past, I've seen she had issues with her feet. It could be that again. Filling. Old days, they used to come up with a bucket of water and a sponge, didn't they? We've moved on. <laughs> but at least she knows that this match isn't going to be too much longer. Either way, and then she'll have 24 hours to recover if she wins it ahead of the semi finals tomorrow. The winner of this match, in, incidentally, plays the winner of the match between An Se and Han Yue, which is uh, starting relatively shortly in court two. between the, the first game. Drastically different, almost every rally now is a hard-fought battle. sudden is a big favourite. Yeah, it's been a big turnaround. 16-14 up, Tungjung was. It's a big run at the crucial time from Yamaguchi. And saw some fire in Tungjung's buddy. That was an excellent point. 
19. I do think when you just look at the body language of both players, to me, Tungjin, she looks a lot more physically drained than Yamaguchi. Well, she thought she heard a call, she didn't, and therefore she has to challenge. God, this is a massive Hawkeye moment. It's just the fact that her body language suggested that she knew it was going to be out. In her mind, 100% that was out now. Did she see what she wanted to see? Yeah, she did. She saw. Sometimes this is the thing. Your eyes deceive you. She wanted it so badly to be out. So three match points after just about an hour on court for the Kami Yamaguchi. Let. Difficult timing there, just as Yamaguchi 20, was about to serve. 17. Flash went off in the crowd. Blake. Points at match point down than that. This is the thing, Tundra's done this so well in the third game. She controlled the rally, dominated the rally. Yamaguchi did incredible to stay in the rally that long, but her retrieval skills are that good. But she's having to do that rally after rally after rally. She's oh, unhappy, no. I think, that is awful. a flash in the crowd. There's nothing that the umpire can do about it. I think she heard possibly the umpire call alert, something, because she stopped. She saw a bright flash, but the problem is, if the umpire obviously doesn't call alert, you have to play on no matter what happens. Well, it's, it's an unsatisfactory <laughs> end, but it, it's not the umpire's fault. It's not uh, anybody's fault, really. I don't think she's going to get any joy with this conversation. And it's a really, really unfortunate way for the game to end. A picture of desolation, and you can see why there are some tears there for Tim Jun. If she feels like she didn't have the chance to save the other couple of match points. But the scoreline will stand, and Yamaguchi, to whom obviously no blame attached whatsoever, and nice to see her. Console Tunjin there. But Yamaguchi is through, and sometimes you just need a shoulder to lean on rather than any kind of technical badminton advice. That's the upshot, the though, game. is that Akana Yamaguchi will be in tomorrow's semi finals. She had to really dig deep after Tunjin battled back. <laughs> Being rather blitzed in the opening game. 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 Second game was similar to the first, but the other way round. <laughs> Yamaguchi coming through against the really desolate Tunjun. Had two match points, remember, in the second game, Yamaguchi, which he couldn't take, but still found the strength to come out on top in the decider. So she wins 21-10, 20-22, 21-18 after just over an hour on court. Well, it's worth having a look at this again. If the umpire didn't call the let, Chris, is it just nothing that he can do? And this is the problem, you know, it's very evident. I'm sure there was a flash, there's no doubt about it, but the umpire's obviously watching the game. The umpire has to, he has to concentrate on the serve and the returner obviously not jumping the serve, moving before the serve struck. So it's impossible for the umpire to be able to see a flash in the crowd 
you know, mid-rally. It's very, very, very unfortunate. But in my personal opinion, the umpires done nothing wrong. It, it's a horrible situation to see. And, you know, for Tunjing, I, I do really feel for her. And it's one of those occasions where, unfortunately, you know, she should have carried on the rally, but she didn't, because I'm sure the flash was that bright, it put her off, or, you know, she couldn't maybe see the shuttle. And it's just one of those unfortunate situations. Welcome back to Birmingham, where the uh, tranquility on the water. So anyway, he's paddling furiously underneath. Doesn't look like it, but he is. The general pleasantness of the city uh, in all its uh, serenity and calmness, not quite matched by what we've seen on court. It's been uh, frenetic and fast and somewhat controversial at the end of that opener. But we've reached the second match now. It's the women's doubles.